the Abscondo Podcast. The nastiness out there is just at an entirely new level. You know, anyone who, like me, is is saying what we believe, who have a different viewpoint um, about what's happening in the world, you know, even about, uh, well, about anything, <laughs> about um, how to live your life differently, you know, uh, spirituality, which isn't normal, um, spirituality at all, religion at all. I mean, um, family values and, and just a person who is, is basically, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm X'd out here for, for a number of reasons. Basically everything about me is a joke to, um, to the people who, uh, are watching the mainstream media. And I guess that's been the case for, for a long time. And that's totally fine because the alternative is to live in a way that I would not wish on my enemy to believe what you're being told, to believe the institutions, to trust authority. Um, and I want to talk about, you know, why, why do people like me, and there's more and more of us every single second in the world, why do we go so far against the, the mainstream, the current, and put up with that kind of abuse, nastiness, personal insults from people who claim to be morally superior, who claim to be not bigots, who claim that we're whatever, 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 and they are um, somehow (laughs) good as they're lashing out and saying nasty personal insults of all kinds at at, at even just a hint of a different opinion or questioning anything. If you question whether the election was rigged, you get a personal insult. Um, you know, they're asking for unity, but they're really just asking for conformity, of course. Uh, fall into line, shut up. And these are people who, who personally, they want to be totally, you know, left alone to do whatever kind of crazy stuff they want to do to have whatever kinds of gender transformation surgeries they want to have, to, um, to have abortions whenever they want to. Um, to never be questioned anything they do and believe that's perfectly fine. And the whole world has to shut up about it. And I, you know, I'm not going to get into like, you know, the transgender and stuff and, and homosexuality is, I accept people. I accept if, if somebody, you know, abortion is tricky. I get that. But you know, at the end of the day, we've got to, we've got to, um, each, you know, we each have free will to do the right thing. Right. But what you don't get is you don't get a world where everyone is forced to agree with you to agree with you. So the best we can do for, for each other is to be accepting, to be open-minded about that people are different. They have a different viewpoint. They've, they've learned about different things. They've experienced different things in life. They've read different things and watched different videos and they have different, you know, different conclusions so why can't there be a little bit of acceptance? You know, what is that emotional reaction that, that would trigger open anger and nastiness and hostility and attack against someone who just doesn't agree that what they say on the news is the truth? You know, first of all, I want to talk about, I don't want to get into analyzing, you know, the, the personalities and the intelligence levels and so forth of these people, but I do want to talk about why a person, why an intelligent person, why a person who wants to be happy and wants abundance in life would go down a path like I've gone down. And I'll start with one example, and that is cryptocurrency. Now, these people were, were probably, the if they're even now getting into crypto, Bitcoin and Ethereum and all the cryptocurrency investments and so forth. Maybe they're getting into it now, but the point is they were late to the game. So the earlier to the game you were, that probably meant you were more open-minded. You were more, uh, you know, away from the mainstream media and trying to find out what's going on in the world. And I wish I was there in 2010. <laughs> I'd be, I'd be a, a billionaire at this point, but I did get in early enough that I just, you know, right now during this crisis, I made I made a killing on cryptocurrency because, you know, and why I understood the system. I understood uh, for many years 
what central banking means, how they're diluting the money supply, what fiat currency means, and, and the inherent value and benefit of a fixed money supply in Bitcoin or Ethereum. I understood the value and the benefits of Ethereum. And many years ago, I made a pretty good investment. And now I just cashed out because now we're, in a, we're at a bubble. Now that everybody else is catching on, the, the idiots come into the market. And that's when you know it's time to sell. I'm not telling you any financial advice. I'm just saying that it seems to me, based on the level of intelligence of people talking about crypto and based on the mainstream nature, when the TV watchers start telling you about cryptocurrency, it's time to sell. And that happened last time. That happened two years ago in 2018 when there was a, a nice a nice bubble. I, I, I held on, but um, I should have probably sold back then as well. And then buy it again when it goes back down, back when everybody's negative again, then buy again. So this is just one example of how you personally can benefit by making a boatload of money while while the people who are normal, the people who are, who are criticizing you are laughing at you for believing in something so silly as a cryptocurrency, you know, years, years ago. And now we have a situation and, and part of, you know, part of my decision to sell, for example, and this is just one example, is also knowing what's going on in the world now. Okay. So I know there's a change coming to the financial system. It's not going to just go on like it is right now. It cannot go on like this. And there are two possibilities. The first is terrifying. The first is moving to a cashless, cashless society with the great reset people, Klaus Schwab and the Bilderberg people and the Davos people in, in charge of everything and, the, the, you know, the deep state in charge and, you know, taking away our freedom to, to have our own cash on the side. Um, you know, controlling our behavior. They can tell us what we can and can't do with our money. And if we don't fall into line, we can't use it and all this kind of stuff. Now that's terrifying. And there's no, there's no upside to that story. In that case, I think, um, you know, cryptocurrency might still have some value because, because their whole, because the entire system is so corrupt, they're going to keep on printing money and, and, and fiat money, you know, dollars and euros and so forth, uh, where there's a central bank and they just print whatever they want to. And loan everything to the to us, and and constantly you know have us work as slaves to pay to pay to pay back their interest. That system will always leave room for cryptocurrency to continue to grow and expand, because there's a fixed supply. It's actually more real than dollars and euros in the world the way that it is, and that's why you've seen this ridiculous situation where one ether is worth you know, well over $1,000. Now that's just crazy unless you understand why that is, but you would never understand that by watching the news or, you know, Netflix or whatever. Now, the other possibility for what's going to happen in the very near future is that we do go to more of a cashless society, but it's, it's run by the good guys. It's based on gold It's going back to the gold standard and the central banks are removed from the equation. Uh, that's what I believe is happening. I believe potentially um, they're allowing the great reset people to, you know, into the banking system to do some of this. But at the, and at the end, they're going to switch it over to the gold standard, and the good guys will have conquered this system, and our money will uh, grow in value. Essentially, it will be just equal to a cryptocurrency in the real world. And in that case, there's probably little, little room for cryptocurrency in, in, in the world if if the real money we use is actually based on gold with a fixed supply and you know then we don't need cryptocurrency so with this understanding of what's happening i'm able to look at my portfolio how much money i have and which currencies and how much crypto and so forth and where the market's at and i'm able to say well now is i'm probably going to want to cash out because it's high but I'll leave some just in case the great reset, reset happens, and that will grow enough to keep my wealth going. Now, this is just one example about money, and don't think that when, you know when I'm when I'm going through so much agony and suffering in terms of just what's going on in the world. You might hear a little bit of sometimes you might hear me to, uh, frustrated with with what's happening in the world. It's not because of my personal situation. I, I spend my days with wonderful people who I love completely, uh, and I don't worry about money. So I'm not whining about, <laughs> don't get me wrong, in these podcasts or my writing, I'm not like, oh, at the bottom and just hoping for a better future. I'm actually trying to help others um, to make the transition that I did several years ago to freedom, to happiness, to joy. And I get attacked for it. And a lot of people like me get attacked for it. 
Now, I agree there's a lot of ridiculous conspiracy theories out there. <clears throat> I mean, completely ridiculous. I have many friends that say absurd things about some kind of magic in the world happening or some kind of a uh, theory about something which isn't even tied to having to any purpose. Like, what, do I, what should I do with this information exactly? Why would you bring this up right now? What does that have to do with anything? And those people, I think, are, are you know, are making it more difficult for people like me to get my message through. Um, but at the end of the day, I mean, there's good information and bad information everywhere, whether it's mainstream media. I don't think there's any good information there, but theoretically, um, and also on, you know, with, with the, the underground movement, um, any kind of spirituality, there's corrupt players, any kind of truth movement, there's corrupt players with self-interest and you know, the Q movement, there's, there's people giving misinformation everywhere. There's bad information. It doesn't disqualify everything. It just means you have to keep digging. How do you expect truth to be revealed? Just, you know, just like that handed to you. Um, you know, I'm stretching a little bit, but I just want want to get that message across that that to think independently, you know, to go against, to be willing to consider things outside of the mainstream media, to be willing to question authority, truly question authority, whether they're actually, whether they have your interests in mind, that allows you to break free so that you can actually create a life where you can be happy. You know, um, we're told growing up that we're supposed to sacrifice, 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 get the grades and do all the right things, go to college, you know, for, for so many years, sacrifice, sacrifice, and we're going to end up with a good job. But anybody, anybody who actually goes through that process and ends up with a job at the end of that realizes, I mean, the vast majority of people, certainly maybe, maybe everybody realizes that it's not exactly true. You're not going to be happy because you have this, this perfect job at the end of all that. And that's astounding that we don't talk about that. I tell my kids that, you know, people don't tell their kids that people don't want to talk about that because that's not normal. So we just lie. We just lie to each other. We just keep that lie going. And it's less and less true every, every year. And so if you tell the truth in your family, your children are going to to have some idea that maybe the, it's not all about that perfect job and all that sacrifice. Maybe they're going to think about business ideas and and do their own thing and be independent. You know, I used to have, uh, I used to work and in, in, I was employed as a as a business development rep in, in uh, software companies. And for many many years, I learned the skills of how to sell complex enterprise software and how to speak that language and get people on the phone and so forth. And I, but I kept on losing those jobs because companies get acquired, you know, in software things change every two years. And, and so you end up having to look for a new job and you're out of income. You have no income for six months or whatever it may be. And I realized that's not the way. So I thought, well, why not do a, a service to do that role and, and, um, have, you know, have 10, jobs at the same time, 10, you know, 10 customers paying me and my team for that role. Now, for the past 10 or 11 years, I've been doing that and I've cut my work down to, you know, five or 10 hours a week, maybe 20 on a, on a hard week. And I make far more money than before. And I never go without income. Even, even though I might, even though I do, even though I do lose gigs here and there, I get others to replace them. Right. So, you know, you learn how to think realistically about about what a job is, what's promised to you by society or by an employer, and how easily those promises are always, are always broken, and then you make the right kinds of plans. Same thing in relationships. You know, I've been in a traditional monogamous normal relationship for a very very long time, and I realized what it did to me, what it did to the relationship itself, what it did to our love, and the reality of what that kind of relationship means, the normal marriage. And I learned the very hard way after a painful, slow process of spiraling out of control and ultimately you know, separating, I learned that I cannot be in that kind of relationship and be happy. It's not what I want in life. I want a relationship with total honesty about everything, total acceptance about everything, you know, based on love, based on acceptance of each other, loving each other for exactly who we really are. And just with that basic switch, which is not normal to do, you know, to never shame or blame or attack each other, to never guilt each other into anything, there's just endless benefits 
and it's it's the right way to do you know a relationship not marriage where you you know you have a contract that forever you're mine and it, it doesn't work because because when you feel terrible when one of you feels terrible you know you want out you're it's going to end or it's going to be just a just a disaster so my thinking about my, my way of thinking about relationships which is completely absurd to basically anyone normal turns off everyone when i talk about it it's the truth if you want to be happy and live in joy with no downside with no negative emotion with no drama with total trust i trust Susanna with my with my money with everything even though we're not even married you know i trust her with everything because we have that trust because we're totally honest and open about everything we know each other she, there's nothing she can find out about me that would threaten our relationship and that goes both ways so it's 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 eternal right and that so that's why i talk a lot about relationship stuff and i should probably do more of that i, I write about that in the free ebooks you can find them at abscondo.com and it goes on and on i mean spirituality you know you may not be getting what you need from a, from a religion because religion is maybe not serving you as much as serving itself so you can you know augment your spirituality by reading things that don't that aren't you know dogmatically in line with what your church may believe or what your parents and you know friends may believe um you know, basically, if you're if you if, if if a person is is fearful all the time, if a person is is angry, jealous, if there are all these negative emotions, stress, something is wrong. You don't have to you don't have to live that way. You know, that's that's not normal, even though it is normal in this world because the world is insane. So, I don't know what what can I say. I mean, when when I'm attacked which I have, which everything I say, I'm attacked, you know, um, from people out there who don't know me. It just proves the point because my point is if you're not going to question what's normal, what you're told, what you're spoon fed by this system, this corrupt, sick system designed to enslave us and, and exploit us for life, you're going to end up being bitter and ignorant. And then when you attack me with bitterness and, and ignorance, it proves the point. <laughs> but that's not what I want. I don't want to be right. This is not about being right. This is about actually helping. I mean, I'm doing whatever I can. I, have, I had a friend yesterday who came to me and said, do more. I said, I'm doing everything I can because... We all, all of us awakened people are doing, doing everything we can. We're, we're sacrificing our relationships because of these attacks, because of, of this ignorance out there. But we have to get these messages out because we love people. Okay, that's why we're doing it. We're not trying to be right. I don't care if I'm right. I wish I was wrong about everything. And it turns out the world is just hunky-dory the way that it is. But you can't tell me that it is because I look outside and everything is insane. Everything is closed. People are wearing masks, walking their dog. It's ridiculous. It's retarded. So you can't tell me everything is normal and okay. It's, there's, something has to change. And I, I what I do is, is whenever I challenge the status quo, the insane status quo, I'm just planting seeds. I go on Facebook. I go around. I just challenge people nicely, something gentle. And they attack like with all the bitterness they can find. But those are those are seeds, because when it all goes down, when the truth comes out, which it's just about to, they're gonna know who to turn to, and and it's not about hey I told you so. It's about like hey I know what's going on. I know the survival tools to to, to live in in a world where you can actually be be happy and joyful and and have abundance and have no fear, and have all your fantasies come true. You know, things I, I would assume people want, maybe. Um, so these are just seeds, and it's all available to you now. You don't have to wait for the system to change. It'd be a lot easier when it does change. But even now, there's nothing to wait for, okay? And this is what that my movie about is about, uh, Treetops from 2018, my books, my blog posts, um, my music, you know? And I'll leave it with with a song today as well. It's an abscondo song. You can listen to my music wherever you normally listen to digital music. Thank you for joining me. Have a great day. So 
I know life is tough, the system is unjust And when you've had enough, they come back for some more So where are you supposed to go, and how are you supposed to know With voices in the head, the whispers of the soul I know money's tight, we lied awake last night, but all she always finds. Come back for some more, where are you supposed to go, and how are you supposed to know? The voices in the head, the whispers of the soul. To lose those few illusions that you've kept so half alive. Now, do as you choose, and as you do, you know the truth will flood your eyes. So I know you're filled with fear, the truth seems so unclear, but you can stand right here. There's nowhere you need to go, there's nothing else to know, just to please let go. Those voices in the head When you got whispers of the soul Oh, oh, oh Voices in the head Whispers of the soul Life is tough, the system is unjust When you've had enough, you can just let go